Welcome to the fourth lecture of Ethical Issues for Modern Computer Professionals. The initial boom of big data and machine learning based uh, automated decision making uh, with their fascinating applications, mainly uh, with mobile apps that are offering lucrative services. Um, issues regarding data privacy were hardly coming uh, onto the surface, at least at the user level. Uh, users were overexcited to get these lucrative services, and they are hardly bothered about what type of data is being collected, what how they are utilized, whether uh, that is breaching some privacy or leak, that leads to some data leaks or not. Although a few professionals and researchers across the globe were pointing out some of the real issues and raised their concerns, but it was uh, overlooked by most of the users and also most of the professionals, business organizations working in this field. But with recent reports on several data breach scandals, uh, starting from uh, Facebook Cambridge Analytica breach, uh, lots of uh, such news across the globe are coming. And now people are really thinking about this type of issue and they are, they are also finding um, serious concerns about that. And these uh, breach of uh, data were uh, of two kinds usually. One is the un unintentional loopholes that were exploited by some malicious attackers and that leads to some data breach, which in turn leads to some financial frauds. And uh, the other kind uh, that was the intentional selling of collected data for business profits but uh, whichever may be the uh, background actually the ethical and moral issues come into the effect that it is not limited to the unethical practices but also in case of unintentional data breach uh, data scientists professionals dealing with this type of data and providing services, business organizations offering such services uh, really need to consider the fact that they cannot bypass their moral responsibility. Because uh, as, a, as a responsible professional, you must own up to your responsibilities and try to understand the issues and try to mitigate the vulnerabilities that may be inside your. Um, this um, data collection and data aggregation procedure which opens up several loopholes which can be exploited by malicious attackers because the point is now we are working with technologies which are much much powerful uh, on the one hand they are providing us fascinating uh, solutions but at the same time the same technology can be misused to uh, lead this type of data breach, which in turn may have a great deal of societal impact along with financial impacts also. So actually in user levels, uh, till now, uh, most of the users don't realize that how much and to whom they are actually revealing their personal data. Because uh, with the good faith, uh, users are happy uh, to share some critical information with their doctors and lawyers, uh, assuming that will be kept more confidential among uh, within themselves, um, guided by some professional ethics. But in this current context of this huge unregulated data aggregation and collection procedure users are not sure i mean 
you cannot be assured that those will be only confined within this domain uh, your sensitive data may go and uh, can be intercepted by some other which may uh, in turn use it for some other purposes which is not expected to be suitable for the user so with this um, we as a professional need to understand the issues that uh, are cropping up uh, in this current context and we need to understand we need to find out the impact and consequences of this type of issues and try to find out the remedies so that this trust uh, goes on and in future uh, this advance of technology uh, is uh, uh, advancing in te technology depends smooth okay. there are typically uh, four different issues that are very closely related with privacy one is that anonymity in uh, many uh, scenarios uh, users may want not to reveal their identity like uh, for example uh, if you when you are providing feedback to certain courses uh, you would like to be anonymous uh, to uh, provide your honest feedback similarly in case of voting i mean there are many other scenarios which you, you may not just reveal your identity you you are ready to participate in surveys or different kinds of applications but uh, keeping your identity um, under cover this is this is uh, this should be accepted but in current scenario uh, it is very difficult to be anonymous so we need to really think that how we can uh, achieve this anonymity in our services and this whole data collection and aggregation process similarly as i mentioned uh, without almost without any effort users are uh, generating lots of private um, their personal data and that is being collected and um, curated by several data aggregators and collectors but there are many types of uh, personal information which an user may not want to disclose publicly or this uh, in very under very restrictive condition they would like to disclose because this type of uh, sensitive information like your religious belief your race your ethnicity political belief in some cases sexual orientation gender and certain uh, health issues uh, which which may act uh, i mean which may lead to discrimination provided the social taboo we have so how to how to handle this type of sensitive information i mean this, uh, prevent disclosure of this type of um, sensitive information uh, within this system of uh, data aggregation and collection we need to think about that also similarly a user often um, shares some information to some organization with a faith uh, that that will be used for certain purpose there is some underlying um, understanding of context now it may not be respected always like most of the data aggregators and collectors may not even know how they are going to use the data that's collected uh, so there the your uh, users assumption may not hold in future in case of retrospective, retrospective data analysis uh, data collected uh, presumably for a purpose may be used in a different purpose it may not be bad always but sometimes may, may not be acceptable to certain users so this kind of repurposing of uh, collected data uh, should be tackled similarly whenever you are having a good faith of certain organizations you know you have faith that those data collected by these organizations will not be misused but suppose that particular organization is got bankrupt or it's taken over by some other uh, organization you know as, as data being an asset will be uh, transferred 
to those organization who is occupying the hold of that particular organization and you don't know whether the same level of respect to your data will be provided in future so in that case uh, users would like to ensure that all data collected by the previous organization would be deleted uh, or at least may not be used by the new organization taking up those uh, old organization uh, without their consent so how to implement this data destruction and these these four different categories of issues we will discuss one by one to start with uh, anonymity so as i mentioned in certain scenarios uh, is anonymity may be a desirable uh, property like again as i have said uh, users are very happy to take up some survey or participate in some research activity provided they understand their identity will not be revealed like suppose all users in you know, um, may be ready to share their medical data uh, that are stored in some medical database of an hospital or some service provider offering such services but they would may not like to share their identity so this collective information may be used for getting some train identifying some trend or getting some future uh, solutions but um, your identity should be made anonymous similarly in type of uh, a, some smoking and drink, drinking habit you are sharing uh, for a research where uh, may, for example like um, a research may be intended to correlate uh, several chronic diseases like hypertension heart related failures how is it related to um, smoking and drinking habit of different person so you will be happy to participate in that research provided that your identity won't be revealed because if it is revealed then your uh, insurance health insurance company may use that and may charge you uh, high premium so that will be not acceptable to you and similarly as i mentioned course feedback and voting uh, these are very very traditional uh, scenarios where you would like to be anonymous now the most common uh, tool for ensuring anonymity in uh, data driven technologies uh, is called de identification usually uh, removal of uh, some properties some some information which directly identify person like name phone address like this so uh, usually what happens Uh, data aggregators and collectors are not expected to use this information for further processing even if they have either they are prevented to collect such information or even if they have collected they are not going to use these informations for further processing or further uh, transfer of data but the question is can the identification ensure anonymity this is the biggest question though it is the current Uh, available options but if we if we really look into this uh, in, uh, great deal then we may found that the answer could be yes and no at the same time yes in the sense that the identity of the person is not immediately evident since uh, we have already removed um, such information which directly identify the person but Uh, as we are we are dealing with technologies which are which are tremendously powerful so that power of that technology can be used to indirectly uh, identify a person uh, even working on the identified data i'll show some example next so uh, and this is uh, a famous uh, comment by Cynthia Dock with with a data scientist working in data privacy in Microsoft research that de identified data is either not data or not de identified so so philosophy is that uh, just removing some uh, information which uh, appears to uh, directly identify a person like name phone address uh, may not make 
the whole data the identifier because there may be some other information there may be some other database by linking them uh, with the super power of this modern technology um, you can re-identify uh, the person so it is it is very very difficult to uh, ensure anonymity through re-identification for example um, uh, this uh, in 1997 uh, professor latin ashwin is currently a professor at harvard university uh, she was a researcher at that time uh, she was able to re-identify uh, the, the health record of the then governor of Massachusetts, William Weld, from uh, publicly available database, which were supposed to be um, de-identified. Actually, the General Insurance Commission of the United States had published health records of several millions of users uh, after de-identifying and de-identifying them and they uh, published this uh, database uh, with a good intent uh, to help future research but professor sweeney had shown that uh, she can use uh, other public data like census data available us census data and this de-identified data and map them to find out identity of many people like this so she has also uh, published a paper uh, with her research where she has shown that 87% uh, of US uh, citizens can be identified uniquely with three information like the zip code, gender, and date of birth. And this was a very, very interesting uh, finding at that time, and they, they, this finding was almost um, supported by another research uh, done by Philip Gole at Paulo Alto Research Center with 2000 uh, census data. Because Latania Sweeney's work, uh, work was done on 1990 US census data, where she had found that 86%, and she claims that 86% of US citizens could be identified uniquely using three uh, properties. Philip Gole have also found that um, several uh, significant percent, like percentage of um, percentage of citizens, is a little bit low, 63 percent, but still 63 percent is a huge percent. So he has claimed that 63 percent of U.S. population can be identified uniquely using just these three. Um, information so it, it was a huge finding so as a food for thought i would like you to consider our other card information because you know uh, i'm not talking about the central database which stores all our biometric data and everything uh, what would happen if that get leaked but try to think that we have generously distributed photocopies of our other card many places like whenever we wanted to take a mobile phone connection sim card or lpg collection everywhere we are supposed to provide a photocopy of other card and the other card the website of our other card content is a similar information name date of birth and gender along with the 12 digit other number so uh, we are not sure how these photocopies were stored and if someone gets my other card photocopy of my other card huh? your photocopy of other card and many people's and then use this modern technology then how much your that particular uh, technology can reveal about us and what may be the impact uh, so there was another popular um, case of re-identification uh, that is also very interesting actually netflix once uh, published a uh, handful of uh, movie ratings uh, given by their customers um, after anonymizing that and 
they had declared a 1 million prize so that anybody who would be able to uh, come up with a more sophisticated solution than their existing movie recommendation system utilizing this de-identified database now this database was uh, claimed to be de-identified by removing um, the information that directly identify a person but uh, researchers at university of texas at austin have uh, done research and they have found that just by mapping another database a similar database maintained by imdb which is available in public just cross-linking these two databases they are able to find out um, the identity of many users because many people uh, at the same time uh, subscribes in both netflix and imdb so if you are interested in the technological aspect how that was done you may read this paper this paper is available okay i have given the link it is stored in archives so you can download and use so the point is that it is it is very difficult to really uh, achieve anonymity just by removing some information which we um, assume that uh, identify a person so in the same line and uh, this this linking of different publicly available databases i would like to um, point out one more thing that uh, recently uh, reports are coming that uh, hr farms they are again using this um, highly sophisticated technology to map uh, the database of professional networks like linkedin and uh, researchgate or any other with the social network um, databases to identify the credentials and the credentials of their job applicants like uh, you may be uh, writing very very good thing about you in your uh, cv available in your linkedin profile but uh, you may not be explicitly given link of your social media profile but utilizing this re-identification technique in the same line netflix um, data and it, uh, combining netflix and imdb database they are able to uh, look at your so identify your social media profile and check whether there exists any conflict between your claim and try to identify the identify as an employee uh, how 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 will your approach i mean you are claiming that you are honest hard working whether that is true whether you have some um, i mean extreme uh, relation with some extreme organization everything they is to try to find out and decide over whether your applications will be considered or will be rejected straightforward in india i don't know whether this type of thing has come but maybe in near future is are coming so you may be ever with this with this i uh, conclude this fourth lecture uh, thank you for your attention